Hi, now I want to talk about door lock controller using one hot encoding for the states. As we see, as we move into larger finite state machines, our state tables can become quite large and cumbersome. And so there are ways that we can uh, implement our controller without having to actually write out a full state table. One way to do that is to encode our states using one hot. If we take a look at our project, we see that we have six states and we have five inputs and two outputs, okay? And so with one hot encoding, we don't have to make a state table. We just have to talk about the idea of each state as far as how do we get there and how do we stay there. If we take a look at the state called start, we see that we can get there if we're in the wait state and S is equal to one, or um, we can stay there if we're in the start state and A is equal to zero. Likewise, we can get to the red one state if we're in the start state and A or B naught G naught is asserted. Um, and we can stay in the red one state if we're in the red one state and A, we get A naught. And so there are obviously each path, each transition uh, line tells us exactly how we can get to a state or how we can stay in a state. And so we're going to use that knowledge to write our equations. If we go to <coughs> model sim, okay, and so once we've opened up our project, we have here I have a new project called uh, door lock one hot, uh, just to differentiate it between our last project, the project that I used for just binary encoding for this particular lab. Uh, I used uh, door lock one hot for this project. <coughs> and so uh, taking a look at the .v file that's associated with this, this door lock one hot combinational, uh, I want to write my equations for each state. And so notice, first of all, in order to do this, I have to have more flip-flops. I have to use a flip-flop for every state. Since I have six states, notice with this particular encoding, I now have <coughs> um, six flip-flops that are associated with states. So my input has six flip-flops. My output has six flip-flops, uh, state and next state, each using six. The encoding that I'm going to use, I have a reset that I have to keep uh, because all of the flip-flops are all set to a zero initially. But each state then is encoded. And notice with each state, only one uh, flip-flop is equal to one at a time. And so if that flip-flop is equal to one, I know that I'm in that particular state. Like, like here, if uh, flip-flop five is equal to one, I know that I'm in the red two state. Alternatively, if flip-flop zero is equal to one, I know I must be in the wait state. And so I can use that rather than having to have a long string of values, state five not, state four not, state three not, state two not, state one not. I just have to say if uh, state zero is equal to one, then I must be in the wait state. <clears throat> Taking a look at uh, some of the equations, again, I don't have to make a state table, um, <clears throat> but I have some equations here that I could show you. Uh, so let me, um, <clears throat> let me set those up. Okay, without giving everything away, because I want you to have to do some thinking in this lab, here I have next state one, which, <clears throat> um, is basically the start state. I know that next state one, how do I get there? I get there if I'm in state zero, which happens to be the wait state, and S is equal to one. And then how do I stay there? Well, if state one ended with not A. Taking a look at our original <coughs> design, we see that here, state one, I get there if I'm in uh, the wait state and S is equal to one, or if I'm in the start state and A is equal to zero, I stay there. <clears throat> and so you're going to write that for each equation <clears throat> and for each state. And so basically having uh, a, an equation for each one, then you'll have to write an equation for weight. And obviously it's going to have five inputs based on the other five states, as well as <clears throat> the value for um, being in the weight state and S is equal to zero. So after you have that, you can go ahead and um, continue on. Okay, <clears throat> and once you've created your .v file for your combinational logic, just go ahead and make a uh, symbol, as I've done here. I have my door lock one hot combinational, my symbol, 
It has um, <clears throat> inputs for the states that are six bits wide and outputs for the next state that are six bits wide. Okay, has all of the inputs for, e for each of the colors, R, G, and B, as well as A being that input uh, to say that a button got pressed. Don't forget to include your finite state machine circuitry here for A. This was, uh, we did the finite state machine controller for A in class. <clears throat> and so basically we have our um, little controller to just output an A so that we only see an input uh, once per clock cycle or only lasts for one clock cycle. So once we have that, we have our finite state machine uh, BDF. We can go ahead and run model sim on this particular um, project. And so, <clears throat> Okay, so we have with model sim for the one hot encoding um, many of the same tests. Notice here we're checking all six of the flip flops for our states, and we have um, each of the uh, test names we can see here SRG, um, SRAB, and so you can see there are lots of tests, um, <clears throat> uh, basically 200 tests that. Uh, I test for with this particular um, lab. Okay, and that's for one hot. We have all of our inputs, we have our outputs, including our next states and W and U. So make sure that you get all tests passed with that, and then uh, you can go ahead and create um, <clears throat> a symbol of your door lock FSM. All right, so once we've returned to, um, we've run model sim. And we've returned back to Quartus 2. Uh, we can go ahead and create a symbol of our door lock FSM BDF, and then uh, add a new um, a new schematic. We have an, a new schematic from there. Um, sorry, a uh, we want we want new, and then a new schematic file. Click on that, and then we can call it door lock. Um, one hot, which I've done. I've added the button debouncers, <clears throat> and uh, I have my door lock FSM symbol that I've created. I have my outputs, which are all buffered using the alternate uh, out buffer, and then we see that by using the QSF, we ha have all of our input and outputs, which is, it is your choice. Uh, the QSF file is set up for either the, um, the push buttons or the switches taking a look at it. You can choose. The top ones are the switches. We have our switches here. You can use those. Uh, I just have mine set to switches. Alternatively, if you want to use the um, push buttons, you can use the push buttons for your inputs. So there they are. Uh, just change, um, just uncomment these out and comment uh, these in and you'll, you'll be fine. Notice I, I have the names here. Um, since I wanted to do two different things, I happen to use the switch um, for the name, okay, your choice um, as to which you prefer to, to set up. <clears throat> and so once you've done that, you can go ahead and program your board and check out DoorLock. Okay, thanks for watching.